long to driven uh, 40 or 50 feet long sheet pipe. So the only option <coughs> is available for me. I will not provide enough distance here. But your sheet bile is still unstable because your uh, uh, sheet bile is supported here like hinge, not like fixed, because you don't have enough distance embedded in the soil. What is the option available for me? We can do some anchor at this location. I'm sorry, anchor? Yeah, let's see. The second one called the anchored retaining wall. I would like to show you this video first before starting to explain it. Here is a sheet pile or retaining wall. Actually, we will still do more excavation. So we don't have enough embedded lens here to make it fix it. So we need to support this lens like this. Can you see? We have a machine drilling at this location, maybe a different location. Pour <coughs> some grouting or concrete. <coughs> but cable supported here by this embedded concrete and this cable will be supported by anchors. Almost like post tension? Yes. Second, second video. But uh, one more time. Can you watch this video? We have a machine. This machine trying to make drilling in the soil. After you reach the required lens, started to pour concrete. And then you have anchor or tendon or cable. Then you put here anchors. You got it? Let's see the second video. Second video is a real video. Here is a retaining board. And here is the anchor. I'm uh, sorry, the drilling board. And you watch your anchor. supported here at the end by concrete which was bored by this drilling machine do you remember the previous video so right now I would like to tight this end of the cable see what happened Tension. This uh, Jack, he will try to pull these cables out to make post tension, some kind of post tension.
So we have different type of retaining wall. This one is more advanced type. We don't need enough embedded or driven part of your retaining wall, just a little bit. Th then you can add anchors, maybe at different level, like this one. We have many levels of anchors. So your beam or your retaining wall, something looks like this, supported here by hinge, supported here by another hinge. So I think two hinges is enough to make your beam or two, your member is stable. <coughs> but if you have only one, it's not stable. Even only if you add fixed. But to make this, this part or this end as a fixed, you need to make more lens embedded in the soil from this side. You got it? So first type depends on self weight, stability. You have a huge amount of plain concrete <coughs> without reinforcement most of the time. And the weight of the retaining wall help in the stability of the retaining wall. The second one called cantilever retaining wall made from reinforced concrete. And this footing and the weight of the soil on this footing will make more stability for the retaining wall. The third one, made from steel sheet pile uh, units driven in the soil uh, one by one and at this location we have male and female interlock so you can make a continuous wall the, third, the fourth one uh, the same like this one or reinforced concrete but we adding anchors embedded in the soil to help for stability, but this technique, we are using this technique for very deep excavation. Any questions so far? So what happened between the soil and the retaining wall? What happened? Actually, your soil will make pressure on the Retaining wall, but remember, do you remember something from last semester uh, hydraulic and hydrology course? Anybody remember what is the uh, water pressure distribution on this surface? Yeah, your pressure equal gamma H. Do you remember something like this? What is the H here? Zero. We don't have H for water. So H here is zero, your pressure is zero. What is the H here? Your H is this distance. The distance between the point and the water surface. So we have H. We have gamma of water, so we have pressure. If you draw between these two points, you can get a pressure distribution of water on this side, that's right? the same pressure distribution from soil to the retaining wall, the same. So at this point, your pressure equal gamma soil. This time is gamma soil, time H. But we need to do something here, K, because soil not the same like water. And at this point, your pressure equal something gamma soil H. We don't have H here. We have H here, so we have value. We have zero. If you draw a line in between, you can get triangle. From the other side, we have a soil also. That's right. So we have a pressure equal something time gamma soil H. We don't have H here, but we have H here a little bit of H, so we have something zero, you can draw triangle. Any questions so far? So the soil pressure on the retaining wall looks like the water pressure on the vertical wall that we learned it before. But for water, 
uh, water pressure in all directions are equal, vertical direction, horizontal direction, this direction are equal at the same point. So we don't have to use something here, just gamma H. But for soil, no, it's different. The pressure not like the vertical pressure, so we need to add something here called K. This K may be active pressure, may be passive pressure. I'm sorry, what you mean by active and passive? Let me ask you a question. What do you think this retaining wall would like to move to left or to right in this situation? We have soil at this location on this side. We have another soil at this location or this level on the other side. What do you think? Which one is bigger? Which one is stronger to push this retaining wall? This soil will be stronger to push this retaining wall to your left. That's right. So this soil will be active, will apply active pressure. And this soil will be, will apply something called passive pressure. So if you have retaining wall and air surface on this side like the same on the other side, I cannot say we have active and the passive pressure. Nothing. Because this retaining wall will not move or uh, sway on this side or this side. But if you have retaining wall like this and your soil level at this location and on the other side we have different level. So which side will be active, which side will be passive? I think this one will be the active pressure. That's right. And this one will be the passive pressure. You have to first define which side is active, which side of passive to be able to calculate what is the value of K. This value, something will be added to gamma H. So active lateral air pressure in case of the wall is free from its upper edge. The wall may move away from the soil. That's it. Uh, that's retained with distance delta H. The soil pushes the wall away. This means the soil is active. And the force of this pushing is called the active force. Anyway, passive lateral force is the other side. So for the wall shown above, in the left side, there exists a soil with height less than the soil on the right side. And as mentioned above, the right side will push the wall away. So the wall will be pushed into the left side. This uh, means the soil has a passive effect and the force in this case is called passive force. So we learned something from this slide. The first thing, your soil pressure on the retaining wall looks like triangle. Gamma H time something. Gamma H time something, factor. This factor can be active factor or passive factor. So we need to decide which side is active, which side is passive. The soil pushing the retaining wall out is called active. The other side will be passive. So your K here will be K active. Your K here will be K passive. Sometimes Sometimes we have ground water level. That's right. If you take a bit, maybe five feet, ten feet, you can find water. So sometimes we have water, ground water level. So if you have water level, this water will apply lateral pressure on the retaining wall. But this, you are talking about water. 
So your pressure will be gamma H without anything else. So if you are talking about soil, your pressure equals something time gamma H. If you are talking about water, your pressure equal gamma H without something. You got it? I'm talking about lateral pressure. Why for soil we need to add something? Why for water not to need to add something? Because for water, water pressure at any point equal in all direction. But for soil, no. So the pressure of static fluid at specific point is the same in all direction according to Pascal Diderot. Calculate the vertical pressure for water alone because the horizontal pressure of water is the same as vertical pressure. So we don't need to add something. Okay. Last one. So we have a retaining wall 